Hello, everyone, and uh, welcome to our webinar this month. We are very, very excited to have you joining us. We have an all-star uh, group today that's going to present and, and help you really understand um, some, some various ways to, to really be part of the, what we, we're going to call our rebound, right? We're, we're getting back in, into the mix of things, and, and it's exciting. Um, and, and so what we're starting to hear are very good things. I was on with a doctor today that he's, he said, Chad, I've been busier than, than I've been in, in years. Things are coming back. We, we're, uh, we have new challenges, and, and I think we're going to address a lot of those today. And we're also going to be talking um, quite a bit about the Paycheck uh, pr Protection you know, Program that was, uh, was put out. There's some big changes that have occurred in the last week with some, some changes that have been pa passed by both uh, Congress and the Senate. Um, and, and Travis Slate's here to talk about those today as well. Uh, many of you know uh, Joanne Tanner from Tanner Management. She's, uh, she has spoken at many conferences. She's been a leader in this space for years and happy to, to have, have both of these, these individuals today. And I'll introduce them both formally here in just a minute. Just, uh, just letting everybody know, and, and for those that are here for the, for the first time, kind of the way that we, we run things with the webinars at Advice Media, as well as uh, for those who, who've here been here on a regular basis, just a reminder. So back up just a, a second. My name is Chad Erickson, and I am the Vice President of Strategy at Advice Media. And we, we really enjoy having everyone here as, as we run our webinars and, and try to do our best to make them as educational as possible. Uh, you will see um, on your screen, you have your control panel. And uh, with that control panel allows you the opportunity to ask questions. I will be moderating those, and we are going to hold questions until the end, and so I, I will uh, will take those. And so at any time during the, the presentation, please go ahead and and uh, put your questions in there, and I'll make sure that uh, that both Joanne and Travis have a chance to to answer those questions. We also have a couple of handouts available for you, so you uh, please feel free to to download that information um, in in regards to the PPP update as well as as the plan that's being presented today. And um, also, this is being recorded. And so if, if, um, if you'd like to go back and review it at any time, or you have a member of, of uh, your staff or somebody else you would like to hear it, it will be available. It'll be on our YouTube page uh, tomorrow. And anybody here is going to receive that link automatically. It will be sent to you tomorrow. So let me, uh, let me quickly introduce our speakers. Uh, we have Joanne Tanner. And she is on a mission to ensure that dentists and their teams rebound and enhance their practices in the wake of this unprecedented COVID-19 pandemic. As a renowned de national dental business consultant for decades, she is ready to roll up her sleeves and bring a practice from struggling to survive to soar like an eagle above the fray. Armed with an MBA in business administration and clinical background as a dental technician and dental hygienist in the United States Navy, Joanne's decades of passionate commitment to dental practice, strategic management, prepare her to command this fight to win. Happy client testimonials. Um, she has a lot of testimonials on her website that really talk about this as well. Um, and she, one of her, her quotes, she says, my greatest joy comes in making heroes out of others. Those who have a dream are willing to do the hard work and want to give their talents and smiles to their patients who need professional and personal ex excellence in the dental care. So excited to welcome Joanne. I'll read Travis's bio here as well. So Travis Slade, he's a CPA, a dental accountant and registered investment advisor focused on providing financial solutions to private practice dentists. And prior to joining Thomas Dole, he spent time working in his brother's dental practice. And so he has uh, really keen insights and he saw firsthand the many challenges that a dentist must juggle and knew that there's more that could be done to help the dental profession. He has spent the last five years at Thomas Dole committed to helping private practice dentists find real world solutions to the financial headaches. Travis received a bachelor's degree in accounting from Brigham Young University, which uh, as a BYU grad myself and my daughter's attending there this fall, just wanted to note that BYU has the number one uh, rated undergrad accounting program in the country. Let's hear it for BYU, right, Travis? Um, but outside of work, he appreciates any time he can spend with his wife and two kids. So happy to welcome Joanne and Travis here. And uh, Joanne, I'm going to turn the time over to you and put myself on mute here while we, uh, we listen to your presentation. Thank you, Chad. Welcome, everyone. We're ready to rebound because everyone loves a good comeback story. 
let's think back to just March 16th and what we've gone through. We've been so confused. It's been chaotic and sometimes downright scary. I have to admit, every week I was learning a new acronym from IDLE to PPP and PPE. We didn't know if we're terminating, we're laying them off, where we're going to furlough our team. And as a coach, I'm used to having all the answers. And it was quite challenging to not know how to help my clients. So it's been a very interesting and challenging time for all of dentistry. I've never known dentists to have to close their doors. Now, most all the states are open. Some have restrictions and yet others are fully open. So we have clients all across the country. I talked to my client yesterday in Florida, Washington, DC, and yet San Francisco still has some uh, challenges with restrictions. Now on a bright note, dental jobs, the economy is truly and finally brushing up. You ready for this? Just last week, June 5th, the US made jobs report. The unemployment rate dropped down to 13.3 from 14.7. You might think, well, that's not too much, but our dental practices were responsible for 10% of the jobs regained last month. 244 of those jobs were from dental practices. We are making our mark on the economy. So you're ready to reopen and not to return just to a normal. Together, let's create a better normal. And what do we mean by that? Doctors, I want all of you and your team to be leaders. I want you to work on your communication. Check in with your team. You know, they've been stressed out at home. And although stressed spells backwards uh, is dessert, and we've been eating plenty of that lately, but we want to check in with them to see how they're doing with their family. Maybe their kids are home from school. So as you know, I like to have quotes. Average leaders have quotes. Good leaders have a plan. And I want you to be an exceptional leader to have a plan and systems. So there are four areas I'd like you to focus on when you talk with your team. And when you talk with your team, it's not just you doctors, and hopefully we have some team members here as well, that it's not you or me telling them what to do. We want to get the ideas from the bottom up, get everyone involved so they can see your vision, get to know your people, your team, as well as your patients. Understand the data, and we're going to do a deeper dive in that today, as well as to understand and develop your systems. Henry Kissinger said this wonderful quote, diamond is a chunk of coal that did well under pressure. So I wanna know, we're all diamond in the rough. How are you holding up with all this pressure of COVID? How is it shaping you and shaping your practice? How well are you doing under that communication? So when you're communicating with your team, weekly team members and weekly team meetings, not just a half a day, once a month, I want you to meet with your team, maybe right after lunch or maybe first thing in the morning, every week for one full hour, especially now. Prior to COVID, many of our practices were doing that because I'd rather you have a shorter time frame to implement those ideas and do a little bit at a time. Because Coach Vince Lombardi told us, if you're on time, you're late. Early is on time, that's right. So you'll be talking about the culture of the team, connecting with them. Well, if your team is connected, if your team is aligned, there's a better culture. Do you think your team members can feel that? Absolutely. And guess what? Your patients feel it even more. So that team culture affects the team retention. It also affects the patient retention. It also has an impact on your new patient flow. Because if you have a better team culture, you're more likely to get those new patients versus if you have a lower score. So you say, Joanne, how am I going to get the score on how our patients are feeling? How's our uh, team members feeling? Well, back in the day, you do a manual survey and we would say it's confidential. They would fax it to us or mail it to us. And that's so 1980s. There's a company out there 
Cambio, which is fantastic. It allows each practice to customize the words and what information they truly want to scan and have that information so that employees feel heard. It truly is anonymous. It's an automatic system. You can set it up for weekly or maybe you prefer every two weeks, but it gives the leadership team the information and how the team is doing and the opportunities to improve without having to do anything manual. Now, it doesn't replace the checking in. It doesn't replace the, at the end of the day, doctors, team members, I want you to say thank you to everyone. Thank you for being here. And leaders, if you send your team members a single flower in a bud vase and on the card, thank you for all that you do, this bud's for you. Such a simple gesture, but truly meant from the heart. So in addition to communication, I want to talk, spend some time on systems. We can no longer have B team players. There's no JV. We must be 100% varsity. We have to be efficient. With all the added costs of the PPE and all the things we're having to do with singular schedule, we need to be 100% efficient. So let me ask you, when a patient calls to cancel and they don't reschedule, what's your system of tracking? Well, back in the day, we would have a piece of paper. I had a notepad. Then I go into offices, somebody has sticky notes. Or what's your system if they come in today and need treatment, but they leave without an appointment? And I want to know what is your system? Email me later and let me know. Frequently, um, we recommend dental intel for follow-ups. It integrates with your practice management. So if the patient cancels, does not reschedule, automatically it creates that follow-up. So that way, together as a team, we know who needs to be called. Because I know we've all been there. We think, whatever happened to Mrs. Morley? She needed to have that three-unit bridge, whatever happened. And we go through all the charts once a year. This is an automated follow-up. When talking about systems, many practices are finding that staggering the start times between the hygienist and the doctor, so we limit the number of people coming and going. Many practices have chosen to add some Saturday hygiene-focused, not restorative, hygiene-focused right now on Saturdays, so we can get caught up with all of those hygiene patients that want to come in. Well, you know, our hygiene schedule for September and October are empty, zero, because we didn't have any hygiene patients the last two months. So how can you possibly fill those? This month, I want you to focus on pulling in the 4910, the perio recall patients, those patients that are on three and four month recalls, because they'll come in now in June, and you have them come back in three or four months, which will help fill your September and October. The other way you can fill your September, October is when you're researching the insurance, when you're looking up insurance eligibility, those insurance patients, sometimes they're allowed two cleanings in a calendar year because then they come in today and they can come back in October. Or if it truly is every six months, then they'll have to wait. So have a proactive plan. Don't wait until September. All right, great. Search for those three and four month perio patients now. My good friend, Debbie, she's a dental hygiene coach. And Debbie Sidel bitke said, dental hygiene appointments are not about total health. It's not just about the cleaning. It's about the total health. If you're spending more than 20 minutes of scaling, it means you have more than a profi to do on that patient. She actually is doing a full webinar tomorrow. If you go to her website, you can sign up now uh, for her program tomorrow. And she's a wonderful speaker. You'll enjoy Debbie. How many of you go into the community or when you meet some new friends and they find out you work for a dentist or that you're a dentist and they say, well, I haven't been in a few years because I lost my insurance. Yet they talked about their wonderful trip to Europe that they had last year, or they all have the latest iPhone. 
we need to understand it's about budgeting. And see, this is one of those decisions that I've had a number of clients in the past, we've talked about it, and decisions we've made in the past might be different today because the world's in a different spot. Reconsider developing an in-office dental plan. Maybe the patients have lost their jobs, they've lost their insurance, but they, they still need to come in to have their teeth cleaned. So you can do it yourself very easily. I've done this for many years, uh, even back in the 80s, before computers. There are companies out there that charge a per patient percentage. And my favorite is, uh, if you're not going to do it yourself, there's a company that does a flat fee per month. There's a number of them, I know for sure, Stone Prism is one of them. But at least reconsider doing it now, because more so than ever, the patients need to have that uh, taken care of and not delay. The other idea that you may want to reconsider, it's been out there for a number of years, is online scheduling. Okay, not for restorative. This is for new patients as well as for hygiene patients. Some offices do it for hygiene only. Let's face it, all of us are very busy. And if we could schedule our veterinary appointment, my dog's groomer appointment, my own hair appointment online, we would do it. Everyone's online and it's very convenient, very efficient. Local Med is one company that I know it works great for our practices, scheduling. Tip number four, the strategy. I want you to look at your practice. Now, all of us have eliminated the magazines. What about the clipboards? What about the check-in sheets? Just take a look around your office and how can we reduce or have less paper? Some of you may have weave for your telephone system. If you don't, uh, the M consent forms, if you don't have the Wii phone system, you can implement M consent if you have Dentrix, EagleSoft, or Open Dental. It allows you to integrate your patient intake forms automatically. It's beautiful. It goes directly into your system. You can have your COVID pre-screening as well as all of your other consent forms. So again, go back to your practice and take a look on what are all the forms that we're doing and how can we reduce or eliminate some of this paper? How about the route slips? And now I've been a fan of route slips since we got the computer in the late 80s. However, less paper is the way to go. And Dental Intel has a patient card that we can pull up. They also have some statistics. So again, everything's right there. So we don't even need to have patient route slips anymore. It's green, but it's also safe. No need to print the schedules either. So again, go back to your office and look to see what you're doing on how you can eliminate that and be more efficient. What's going on today? So at a glance, we can look at the schedule to see who's coming in and maybe if they're scheduled for their next appointment or they don't have their next hygiene appointment. So doctors, many of you know me and I love verbal skills. I want you to customize it I want you to play American Idol and make it your own. But today, on that last operative visit, today when you're cementing the crown, when you're placing the last restoration, I want you to tell the patient the treatment looks textbook perfect. And I know that was a big investment for you. I want to help you get as many miles or as many years possible out of that care. Does that sound good to you, John? He says, sure, doctor. That means you work on your home care, and you and I are going to see each other every six months. And I see you have your next future appointment scheduled for November 15th, or I see you don't have it scheduled and we'll get that scheduled for you now. This starts with the clinical team, not the front office. Keeping with the less paper, have you considered emailing your statements? I know Dentrix has this feature and it's been fantastic, the other idea is less paper coming in that add a link to your website to pay your bill online. How efficient is that for your patients? Who has checks anymore? So um, having the emailing of the statement with the link to pay is very nice. How about some marketing ideas? Now, right now you have a lot of patients that want to come in 
but at some point you want to make sure that you're marketing, you're reviewing what you're doing. Have you seen the Nextdoor app? Many times I'm seeing the neighbors are wanting to know who's a good gardener, who's the best dentist. Make sure you and your teammates are on Nextdoor as well as your patients so they can give you good reviews. Did you remember to turn your Google reviews features back on? Yes, they are back and working now. Google reviews, not the other reviews that the review company will send it out, but it doesn't go anywhere. No, Google is king and we need to hear from our patients. Be sure to respond to those reviews and you're more likely to get one if you verbally ask the patient. And you see, Mary, it was delightful to see you today. Later today, you're going to be receiving a review. Would you take a few moments and give us your honest feedback? All right, and there are ways, and if you call me, we can talk more about it, how to, you can selectively send the reviews to your patients. And again, respond to each and every review. The other marketing idea I want to share with you is to upload a video on all the different protocols that you've done for the practice for the patient safety, for your team safety. It shows them how much you, how much you care and post that again on your Facebook, Instagram, as well as on your website. I have a client, it's a great story. He's been working with us since the early 90s. Yes, and he developed this very cool system and so I called the local uh, TV station in his area in Tampa, Florida, and they went out to his office. And if you text me later, I'll send it to you. He made this amazing um, system with his own section and the TV station came out and interviewed him. It was excellent uh, system that he put together, free PR, but it showed that he cared going above and beyond and it was rather nice of the TV station to help pass the word out there. In addition to your reviews and sending out the video, make sure you have a Google My Business page. Many people don't know what that's about. I know the advice media clients do, but if you're not with advice media, make sure you talk to people or call me because it's a great place to add info. Google likes new info that helps your positioning. Add a flyer, it doesn't have to be a promo, but if you have a special, but maybe it's a simple flyer with your logo and the different updates that you've done for safety. Again, new data, making sure you have the page first of all, and then post to that page. Creating a virtual tour that you post on Google My Business, use it on your website as well as social media. People like to see the, the videos. We already mentioned the reviews and getting those requests. On your website, do you have a Q&A section? The top frequently asked questions that the patients want to know and you're engaging them and then they're more likely to call. Put it on YouTube. Maybe send those out in an e-newsletter to your patients. It's a good time to look at your photo gallery. I like seeing before and after pictures and so do your patients, it's very powerful. So update them, get rid of the old ones, add some new ones, and update all of your photos. Make sure you're adding new content. Uh, Advice Media gave me all these great ideas, and we want to make sure we're adding about our safety to our patients, safety to our team members. Add info to your blogs, add info to your Facebook. It's always good to do that. As I mentioned earlier, continually reevaluate those past ideas the ideas that weren't relevant two months ago or two years ago, like we talked about the in-office membership plan, revisit all of those ideas and you may decide that today's a good day to reconsider those assumptions. Are you texting your patients? Are you promoting your different um, ideas that you have within your practice? When a patient calls, and if you do have to place them on hold, Doctors call your office, team members call your office and ask to be placed on hold. Occasionally, I found out that it, it stopped working or maybe it's always been silent. Yes, that was silence for only three seconds. Think about it. The patient's on silence for a minute. It feels like 10 minutes 
or maybe you have music, or maybe you want a message on hold. If you do have a message on hold, maybe you want something that talks about the COVID changes. Maybe you want video marketing. SOH Productions does a great job of that too for the on hold. A couple of weeks ago, I was talking to a, an office manager and she said her schedule for the following week was difficult as everyone was canceling. So I asked her, well, what was she saying and what were the patients asking? So she was calling the patients to ask, are you comfortable coming in or would you like to reschedule? So remember team, we need to convey that we're comfortable. I talked to an office manager today and she's getting the patients to prepay because we want to limit the number of people in the front desk area. Because she came across with confidence, she had no uh, difficulty at all having her patients prepay for the treatment. So those verbal skills need to come from confidence in how you're projecting that image when you're asking any type of question. And we certainly don't want to ask a new patient, have you been here before? Well, we don't know if they're a new patient. So if I ask that question to anyone, if they've been coming to the practice for 20 years and you didn't recognize them, or maybe you have a new team member, we all need to know, do not ask, have you been here before? If you'd like a, an audio file of all my key verbal skills, send me a message. I'd be delighted to email them to you because we don't have enough time to go through them. But one of the top ones is, remember, don't use the word just. It's not just a cleaning or just an exam, it reduces, that word reduces the value of what you're providing. Teledentistry is becoming very big. We know that people may not want to come into the office or they're unable to come in. So make sure you have the way to implement the teledentistry. Here are some codes for you. And the ADA has a great guide to understanding and documenting teledentistry. And you'll all be receiving the PDF file of this later. So if you don't have time to jot these down or take a screenshot, we'll be sure to send this to you. So I'm not sure how many specialists are joining us today. We work with specialists all over the country. And it's amazing how many of them are still pulling out a piece of paper, writing on it, giving it to the patient. And then they don't know if the patient ever went to the endodontist or did they go to the oral surgeon. So we found a company called Refera because paper referrals are now a safety concern. And because the virus can live on the paper, yes, with Refera, they fill it out online, but I print the paper and hand it directly to the patient. Refera is actually free. And they have this really cool video chat, which allows you to do teledentistry for free. So um, I suggest go to the refera.com or call me and we can share some more information on that. But I thought with implementing teledentistry, that's a great way and specialist, it's an amazing way for you to keep track of your referrals and for your general dentist to see all the referrals on one source. Tip number eight, I want you to look through your credit card and evaluate all of the overhead and reconsider some different patient payment options. Look at all those monthly subscriptions that you're signed up for. Do we really need all the Amazon accounts? Do we need the Netflix? I want you to be open-minded. I had an office who switched from Dentrix to Open Dental because they found it was much more efficient and better for her overhead. I was one of the first Dentrix users in the late 80s and I love it. Open Dental is an amazing software and from what I've heard, it's easier on the overhead much less investment. In this year, we're going to see some lower credit scores for a number of reasons. So we need to be convenient and easy to buy from without putting the practice at risk. So I've been researching different patient financing programs, and I found a very creative way to give your patients ways to pay, and it reduces your merchant fees. So it's fair to the patients and it's fair to the practice, dot pay. Well, I was really impressed um, my coaches were looking at it. There's no sign-up fees, amazing. No monthly fees. There's no transaction fees. You said, what's the catch? Um, reach out to DocPay. They'll do a, a direct webinar for you, but it truly is amazing. They set up the ACH, and you can have a link to pay on your website. 
So if your Dentrix doesn't set it up for you, if your current merchant account doesn't set it up, you can collect your membership fees, your past due balances, and have that pay my bill online on your website. So it's pretty nice how that it sends an email receipt to your patient as well. Again, doc pay, because we wanna look at all those subscriptions. So after you look at your overhead and you're evaluating your systems, we need to know the data. The checklist manifesto, we need to make sure that you are checking everything off every day. You would never get on a plane if you thought that pilot had a, only a rear view mirror. No, they need to have their GPS on where they're going. So I want you to truly understand how to measure and manage and understand your data. So tip number nine is to make sure you're looking at your data. Back in the day, they would fax us, our clients would fax us the, the paperwork. And now uh, if you are online, there's a number of tools that we can get through either Dental Intel or a number of other softwares. Whatever it is, we used to only look at last month. Well, that's fine, but I want to look at now. What did we do last week? You see, monthly, it could have been four months, four weeks, or it could have been a longer month. So we want to look at a rolling 12-week trend, looking at the last week, looking at the last 12-week trend. Let's look at today. Let's look at the upcoming week. So every day, looking at this data. But I've also found it's important. Each person has their own measurable data something they're proud of to report because then we'll all have their accountability. And we know that she's re talking about the recare. I'm looking at collections. Somebody else is looking at the new patient data. So it uh, really enhances the teamwork. When we look at those scorecards, it could be a daily scorecard or it could be a weekly scorecard on what are those measurables that you want to measure, therefore manage. I'd like to offer you, anyone today, if you want us to look at your KPI, your key practice vital signs, we'd be happy to do that for you. If you have uh, Dentrix, EagleSoft, or Open Dental, we can do that automatically. And because as Robert Schuler said, tough times never last, but tough people do. So I'd like to help you and your team rebound revive and restore your dental practice. There's a growth report that will come out from that because frequently when we see all the hygiene patients, especially now, but pre-COVID, we found that 27% of this one particular practice of their nearly 2,700 active patients were not seen in the last 18 months. Yes, 18 months is considered active. So there's a way we can go in and take a look at the hygiene continuing care and what potential does that have in your practice? The pending treatment that hasn't been done. So we can take a look at how that would affect your practice and what is your system to keep track of them and how you can get a hold of those patients for that potential production in your practice. So we offer some virtual training it's customized, it's very affordable. Let us help you regroup and get a grip on your practice when it comes to your systems, when it comes to your people, as well as to your data. Next, I'd like to talk to you about our first responders. I'm very thankful for the physicians, the, the nurses. My idea of the first responders, the Academy of Dental CPAs, all the dental CPAs that are out there. Uh, today, we have Travis Slade, joining us with Thomas Stoll, and they have just been instrumental. It seems like every week I was learning new acronym between the IDLE, the PPP, and so Travis, take over the presentation, and everyone, welcome Travis Slade. Thank you, Joanne. Um, I, my option to take over has seemed to go away. Let me see if I can figure this out. Exactly. Give me one second. Do 
Give me one more second, see if I can. Yeah, for some reason it's not there, so. Um, I'm with you, I'll do it. Okay, sorry about that. Um, well, first of all, thank you, Joanne, for inviting me to uh, join you on this webinar, and thank you, uh, Chad and Advice Media for hosting this. Um, I, I very much appreciate being able to be here and um, share just a couple updates from the accounting world as it relates to uh, rebounding and getting back to your feet. Um, it's been a bit of a roller coaster on our end as far as emotions and these PPP programs and are they good, are they bad? Um, but right now, I'm, I'm feeling pretty optimistic about things and, and excited to share some of these updates. Um, about the government loan program. Um, just a little bit about our firm um, is we are uh, an accounting firm based in the Bay Area. We serve about a thousand dentists and we're one of the founding members of the Academy of Dental CPAs. So no matter where you're at in the country, there is likely a, a CPA like ourselves that focuses um, only on dental practices. Um, and then today we are going to be referencing a couple resources. Um, we our firm has an Excel uh, PPP tracker and um, some other resources, and those will be made available uh, after this webinar. Travis, I think you have control now. Okay, so I'll just share my screen. Is that what you're? No, okay. I think you can click through. If not, maybe not. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, Travis, go ahead and share your screen. It looks like that'll work out. Okay. You can give me one second just to get it up. Um, no. Problem. All right. Can you see that now? Yes, perfect. Okay. All right, so um, an acronym that you have probably heard a lot about is the Paycheck Protection Program. Uh, us cool accountants call it the PPP, and uh, not to be confused with PPE. So the Paycheck Protection Program has had some, some big updates uh, recently, and uh, as, yeah, even as uh, recent as last week, there were some updates. And um, just to lay some groundwork, so I'm not sure where everyone is at on the Paycheck Protection Program, if you have money or if you don't, but this is a program that was born in the fire of the office closures. Um, the, the Congress put this together with the intent to help you, a business owner, pay your people. And so at the core of this has always been to, to make payroll or to pay payroll. That's also where some of the challenges have come. Um, and we'll talk about that in a second. And uh, a, a current status of the program is if you have not received money, there is still money to be, um, to be had in the Paycheck Protection Program. Um, maybe you've run into problems with your bank or whatever. If you don't have money, send me a message and, and I can fast track you through a bank, um, but it's not too late. Uh, you, you still have um, till the end of this month to get PPP money if you don't already have that. Um, and then just kind of reiterating, what is this money uh, used for? So the government says if you use this money for payroll, rent and utilities and mortgage interest, then the loan is forgiven. Uh, some people call that free money. So um, it, we, our goal is to help you get forgiveness on this money so that you don't have to pay it back. If you don't follow certain rules and, and part of the money is not forgiven, it then becomes a loan. It's not a bad loan, but it's uh, ideally you want to try to maximize the forgiveness amount. And like I've said, there's been a lot of updates to these rules. Um, they, this has been a wild time, and every week there's something new coming out. But just last week, the president signed uh, uh, the Paycheck Protection Program Flexibility Act of 2020. And this was fantastic news for the dental community. Uh, especially because most of you were closed at least for the month of April and many were closed for the month of May. And you're supposed to use this money to pay your people when you're closed. 
it was really hard to know what to do. And you had eight weeks to spend this money. Um, and it created a lot of stress. Um, and we were ready to jump through all kinds of hoops to, to meet these rules. But I want to discuss some of the big changes that happened last Friday when the president signed this bill and what this means for you. So the biggest change is that they moved it from eight weeks to 24 weeks. So you now have 24 weeks to use your PPP money, which is fantastic. So effectively, they've given you your, your PPP loan is based on 11 weeks of full capacity payroll. So you have 24 weeks to use 11 weeks worth of payroll. So it's very, very likely that many of you are um, going to be able to meet this criteria. Now, it's 24 weeks from the date that the funds were deposited in your bank account. There has been, some of you may have heard some uh, information out there about an alternative payroll covered period. Um, that still is, applies, but it's not as relevant or urgent as it was when it was an only eight week covered period. And um, so for many of you, uh, changing to 24 weeks is, is awesome news. Another big change that happened was they um, initially said that you had to spend 75% of the PPP money exclusively on payroll. And they lowered that to 60%. So you, you have to spend at least 60% of your PPP money on payroll. And again, that, that's also good news. However, within 24 weeks, we think this is going to be an extremely easy criteria to meet. And Again, many of you will likely um, uh, meet, uh, spend 100% of your PPP money on payroll. Um, that 60% is not a cliff. It initially was last Friday, but on Monday they changed it, uh, meaning if you don't meet that 60% criteria, if you hit 59%, you'll still get forgiveness. It will just be prorated uh, appropriately. Um, another big change, uh, this is uh, was was one, one criteria that they have in the Paycheck Protection Program is that you need to restore your employees' jobs. And so the, the way that they were calculating this is they were looking at your uh, February 15th payroll, and they were going to say by June 30th, you had to have the same amount of employees or full-time equivalent employees in your practice. Well, they changed that June 30th date to December 31st. And that's welcome news because we're still not fully out of this thing. We're still not uh, at 100% and some staff um, doesn't want to come back and, and whatever the excuses, is, excuses are, um, this, is, this is definitely welcome news to the dental community. So you have until December 31st to restore your, uh, your full headcount in your office. Um, and then this, this last change that they made is probably not as relevant if you get 100% forgiveness. So if you get 100% forgiveness, your loan's done. If you don't, then the remaining portion becomes a loan. And that loan used to be uh, a two-year term, so it had to be paid, paid back within two years. And they changed that to five years. The only catch is they changed it to five years for any new loans made after June 5th. So if you're somebody who received your loan before June 5th and you think for some reason you're not going to have a portion of that forgiven, you may want to contact your bank and negotiate a five-year term on the remaining unforgiven amount. Um, I, I think this scenario is unlikely, and, and uh, hopefully you can get 100% forgiveness. Uh, so some dates to remember. So June 30th, this is the last date that, day that you can apply for the PPP loan. Um, so if you haven't, make sure you do it by then. You should do it. If you don't have PPP money, cancel this webinar and apply for PPP money right now. Um, you, there's no, no reason to wait. Um, and then you have 10 months after the end of the 24 week period to apply for forgiveness. Um, so that's plenty of time um, to apply for forgiveness. And then December 31st is when you need to make sure and bring back all your people um, and, uh, you know, make sure that, that you're meeting that criteria. So many of you, you know, uh, probably received your PPP money in April. That means your covered period is going to end September, October, and you're probably going to wait until December 31st to make sure you meet this uh, full-time equivalent headcount. And so you'll probably be applying for forgiveness early next year. So January, February, um, you will most likely be applying for forgiveness. So 
what are the big takeaways from these recent changes and, and what's happened with the Paycheck Protection Program? The first thing is, is to focus on payroll. So um, because we think within 24 weeks, most of you will be able to meet uh, the criteria of spending all of your money on payroll, I would, I would put that as your primary focus. Um, spend PPP money as you ramp up opening your office. Um, there are tons of questions that are still out there in the Paycheck Protection Program. And, and really, I don't see a need to get buried in the minutia of that. Um, we can keep it simple and focus on payroll. And in connection with that, with the prior rules before last Friday, we were ready to play a lot of PPP games. But now we can just do what is natural for the business. So just, just spend your PPP money as you would um, with or without it. Um, so do what is natural. We don't need to play any PPP games. Um, so some games that people were playing uh, is they said, okay, I have to spend this money within eight weeks, so I'm going to inflate my employee's payroll. Um, don't do that anymore. So you, you want to spread this money out as long as you can. So if you've been inflating someone's payroll or giving unneeded bonuses, um, there's no need to keep doing that. A lot of people were putting their, uh, their kids and their spouse and their aunts and uncles and cousins on payroll to, to spend this money and try to keep it in the family. No need to do that. Um, so, so stop doing that. Um, again, we want to spread this money out. Now, there are tax reasons uh, unrelated to PPP why you would want family members on payroll. And if that still exists, then yes, do that. But um, don't have your family members on payroll just for PPP purposes. And if, you're, if you have good cash flow in your business, you can resume taking a regular uh, salary schedule or uh, payroll for yourself, the owner. So there is a limitation on how much payroll will be forgiven. And so a lot of times people were limiting themselves by only paying what, what the forgivable amount is. And there's really no need to do that anymore. Um, just just pay your pay schedule as needed um, or, or as you normally do. Um, so that's the Paycheck Protection Program. That's the first um, government program that was born in this crisis. The other program by the SBA is the Economic Injury Disaster Loan. And again, us super cool accountants, we just call this the IDLE loan, um, even though IDLE has the term loan in it. We say IDLE loan. And um, this is a program that existed pre-COVID. Um, so this, uh, you know, was intended when a community is, is devastated by a hurricane or something. This is a program that the government set up. But this also applies to the COVID crisis. So there are two main categories to keep in mind with your idle loan. There is an emergency advance, which you'll see in blue, and there's the actual loan. So the emergency advance is a much lower uh, dollar amount. So the most you could receive is $10,000. Um, if you did get this money, you got $1,000 per employee up to $10,000. And this doesn't have to be repaid. Um, it, it probably just magically appeared in your bank account one day and, and you took you off guard. And you're like, oh, what's this? Um, so that was the idle grant. Um, and there are, they are not taking any new applications for this. So, um, if you didn't apply for it yet, uh, it's too late. Um, and then there's the idle loan. So this is an actual loan that you have to pay back. Now they advertise this, that it's up to $2 million that you could get in loan money, but most of our clients are getting loans approved at $150,000. The terms of this loan are very favorable. It's like a mortgage. You have, to, you have 30 years to pay it back at 3.75%. And you will be contacted by the SBA and they'll have you sign some paperwork. It won't just magically appear in your bank account. Um, but it is an, a loan that you have to, to pay back. And so um, you want to be thoughtful about that. I just want to highlight a couple things about each of these. And, and they, these are treated very differently. So you might want to think of these as, as their own beasts in and of themselves. So this, um, the idle emergency advance uh, can be used. So what can you use it for? You can use it for almost anything. Now, it's, the most you're going to have is 10,000. So it's not like you, the, the sky's the limit with this. Um, we do have an ex expense guide on the on details of what you can spend this on um, that that we can provide to you after this. But generally, you can you can use it for for most uh, business expenses. So it, you know, thinking about PPE, buying supplies, getting up and running with your office, you can use that money for this. 
But there's one caveat is the uh, idle emergency advance will reduce the amount of your PPP forgiveness. Just as an example, if you got a PPP loan for $60,000 and then you got an idle emergency advance for $10,000, that means that you had $70,000 deposited into your bank account. Of that $70,000, only $60,000 can be forgiven or, or free money. There's that a $10,000 that either becomes a loan or you, you pay it back. Now, we, in our slides, I have an, a, an example with lots of numbers that will make your head hurt if you don't like accounting stuff. But, so you can review this after the fact. Um, but this is an example that, to go through this example of what I mean by the, the idle advance reduces the amount of PPP forgiveness you can get. So keep that in mind. Don't get too uh, liberal with spending that money without understanding that first. Now let's talk about the actual loan. So this, this is money um, that feels great to have, but you have to pay it back. Let me just say this about the idle loan. Um, it comes with a lot of strings attached. And most of you that have gotten this paperwork have seen that in the paperwork. There's, there's a lot of stipulations um, with this loan. And so our general guidance is to really only use this loan if you really, really need it. This is not you know, just free money like the PPP that you can use whether or not you really want it. Use the idle loan if you are worried about going out of business and you need genuine working capital for your business. It's a great option if that's the case. If you're fairly flush with cash, if you have good cash reserves and you've been listening to your CPA and, you know, building your, um, your uh, working capital overhead reserve, um, then, then you likely won't need this. Um, but if you are taking this, it is intended to be used for working capital. So paying your bills, you can pay your credit card, you can pay your loan payment. However, there are a few things that, that you cannot use this money for. And this is based on questions that I've been getting from clients. Um, so th the first thing is, you know, can I pay off all my other debt? Um, the answer is no, you cannot. It's, they're very specific that you cannot refinance your other debt. You can use the money to make a debt payment. So, you know, if you have a, a $5,000 payment a month on your practice loan, you can use the idle loan to make the payment, but you can't use the idle money to refinance your entire practice debt. Um, the other big question I, I probably gotten a hundred times is can I use the idle money for capital improvements. Hey, I need new computers and I need new chairs anyways. Can I just use this money to do that? Um, they say no capital improvements um, with this money. So uh, the short answer is no. Um, if you have a big tax liability and you wanna use this money, you can't do that either. And then another common one with, with people who are owners of an S corporation, there is language in the idle loan that says that they will restrict your ability to take out distributions from the business. So if you are an S corporation, you typically pay yourself a mix between wages, W-2 wages, and distributions, uh, S distributions. Uh, if you get idle money, you will then need to only pay yourself wages. Uh, we don't think that you can take distributions while you have an idle loan, which somewhat defeats the purpose of having an S corporation. Um, uh, by putting pushing all of your money through wages. Um, so again, it just further it, uh, reiterates that you really don't want to take out this loan if you don't have to. Um, there are some restrictions to keep in mind. Um, and that's it for me, but feel free to reach out. Again, if you don't have a PPP loan, uh, reach out to me and, and we'll fast track you to, uh, to get that money. And then if you have questions about some of these resources, um, Joanne has them as well and, and can make them available to you. Um, yeah, thank you much. Travis, thank you. And Joanne, thank you very much. You know, this is, uh, you know, Joanne talks about the, the first responders. And I appreciate that. I was talking to a, a very good friend of mine who's, who's an accountant and owns a, you know, he's a partner in an accounting firm. Actually, he's, he's the, uh, the founder and owner. But uh, I said, what are things like right now? And he said, I've become a psychologist. I've become a counselor. Um, you know, you talk about a hundred times you're answering these questions he feels mm -hmm. the same way um helping all these small businesses really grapple with what's going on and all the the ins and outs and so thank you so much for sharing your insights today and joanne thank you as well 
Um, Joanne, there's a question that, that, that um, someone had for you, which is if you have a list of some of those verbal questions when answering the phone, and I, and I love that, and if, and if there's anything we can do to provide that um, to our attendees today, that would be great. You know, I, I've, uh, I've heard it called the, the uh, person answering the phone is, is the, the most important person um, in the office. It doesn't matter what the degree on the wall says of who's there. If that person answering the phone isn't excellent, mm -hmm. then, then we're, we're really missing out. And so it, it's the, that's the person of first impressions, right? And, and people, yes. it, it's critical to have the right person there. I'd be happy to send you the uh, audio file to the, our key verbal skills. That would be great. Um, and I can connect you with uh, with the person asking as well, and so you know, make a good connection there would be helpful. And because Joanne, you know, that's that's your that's your job in your life, and and so don't want to necessarily give away your intellectual property, but I think at least we can make a connection, and the two of you can connect them. So, um, so Joanne, what's uh, you know, one of the questions I have is is sort of setting up this this process, and I love that you, you kind of related to it. Hey, if we can make um, an iPhone payment, why can't we pay for for our, our insurance? So, you know, wh where if they want to get in touch with you and where do they want to start, you know, you know, do you want to put up your information again and, and so they, they know how to reach you? Let me let me maybe share, make you the presenter again so that they can get your information on here. Because I think that's important. Absolutely. Is there's a ton of options that that people have and and we have to start thinking about things differently. Um, the way that we've we've done things in the past just isn't going to be be good enough, right? So it's it, it is a challenge. Um, another question that that came up is, uh, and Travis, probably more towards you is, what does? Well, I'm sorry, Joanne. Let me have you answer that question first, then I'm going to switch over. So go ahead. As far as getting a hold of me, go to my website, tannermgmt.com. You can email me, Joanne at tannermanagement.com, or my phone number, the office line. 916-791-2720. Call or email me anytime. Perfect. And then Travis, uh, a question that came up is, what does a 1099 contractor, you, can they use the PP loan for and, and, and what's, what's involved in that? Yeah, so the PPP program is designed to allow independent contractors to apply for their own PPP loan. So they, they contact their bank Again, I'm happy to get you in contact with the right banks because some of the bigger banks, um, I won't name Bank of America and Wells Fargo, but banks like that uh, haven't done a great job at accommodating small businesses. So, uh, but yeah, they apply for their own PPP loan. Great. Yeah, it's uh, it was well reported that those those two banks in particular really failed their businesses. Um, they they were not prepared for the onslaught, and nor did they accommodate um, as it was ongoing so it was unfortunate yeah perfect um i was looking to see if we have any other questions looks like we're, we're pretty clear you guys have done an amazing job and we've had a, a very attentive audience and uh, i know we're going to get a lot of of uh, questions afterwards and so thank you for putting your information here but joanne and travis thank you so much i really appreciate you taking time thank you to to everyone who's attended uh, we wish you all the best. This is a, an interesting time. Um, it's, I hate it gets overused. It's unprecedented. Um, it's different. We're figuring things out together. And, and I hope that at a minimum, there was at least one thing that you took away from today that you're like, that, that makes sense. Let me see what I can do with that today. And so I hope that that's, that's everyone's attitude, that continual learning, Let's make that happen. Again, um, everyone, wish you all the best. Let's continue to succeed. Let's lift each other up and make this happen. So we'll talk to you soon, everyone. Take care. Thank you. Thank all you right. Guys. Bye.